The story begins by showing a glimpse of the island goddess, Te Fidi, whose heart possesses the ability to breathe life into the sea and the surrounding land. Unfortunately, a demigod named Maui, equipped with a magical hook that allows him to transform into any animal, has his sights set on stealing the heart. Maui succeeds in his mission, taking Te Fidi's heart in the form of a green stone, causing the island to descend into darkness and ruin. But without her heart, giving birth to a terrible darkness. Teka, a fiery and earthy demon, confronts Maui, knocking him into the sea alongside Tefiti's heart. Maui and the heart's whereabouts remain unknown, and the island continues to be consumed by darkness. Despite this, many hold out hope that one day a hero will arise, find Maui, and return the heart to its rightful place. As an old woman named Tala narrates the story to a group of children, a boy from the village named Tui interrupts her, believing that the island is a safe haven for all. However, Tui's daughter, Moana, believes that the ocean has called her soul, and she is seen rescuing turtles from the clutches of predatory birds. Moana later discovers Te Fiti's stone on the beach but is called away by her father before she can fully explore it. Although Moana is uncertain whether the stone is indeed Te Fiti's heart, her father urges her to return it to the ocean. Moana longs to return to the beach, but her father reminds her of her duty as the only successor to lead the Motunui village. In summary, Moana grows up to be a brave and beautiful teenage girl who still loves the ocean, despite her father's strict prohibition against playing in it. Moana's grandmother encourages her to follow her heart, which leads Moana to spend more time near the sea. However, Moana's father, Tui, stops her from going too far into the ocean and instead takes her to the top of Motunui Mountain to see a pile of sacred stones. Each village head is responsible for placing a sacred stone to signify its importance in the community. When Moana prepares to take on her role as the village head and help the people, she encounters a problem. The fishermen are unable to catch fish around the island. Moana comes up with a bold idea to sail beyond the island's borders, but her father vehemently opposes the plan, fearing for the safety of their community. Moana's mother reveals that Tui is overprotective of the island because of a traumatic experience with the ocean. A few years prior, when Tui was still young, he and his best friend went swimming in the ocean. Unfortunately, Tui's friend was swept away by the waves and couldn't be saved. This traumatic experience caused Tui to become overly protective of Moana and develop a strong aversion towards the ocean. Moana is torn between being a good daughter and following her heart's desire to be out in the ocean. After much consideration, Moana decides to set sail with her piglet companion, Pua, using makeshift boats and equipment. However, due to her inexperience with sailing, Moana ends up crashing her boat and getting stuck on a rocky shore. This experience traumatizes Pua, but Tala arrives and offers her understanding to Moana. Moana is surprised by her grandmother's seemingly carefree attitude toward the ocean, and her willingness to dance with stingrays. Her grandmother wants to show her something and she is taken to a mysterious cave. Inside, Tala encourages Moana to explore and Moana discovers a room filled with ancient boats. Intrigued, Moana heads towards the largest boat and sounds a conch shell, which magically transports her back in time to the memories of her ancestors. There, she learns that she is the descendant of a long line of skilled sailors and explorers. However, Moana also learns that since the demigod Maui stole the heart of the island goddess Te Fiti, the ocean has been cursed and filled with dangerous monsters. As a result, Moana's father, Chief Tui, has banned the villagers from venturing beyond the reef, causing them to forget their history as seafarers. Moana's grandmother, Tala, believes that Moana is the one who can restore the heart of Te Fiti and end the curse. Guided by Tala, Moana sets out to find Maui and restore the heart. But she is hesitant and instead seeks the help of her fellow villagers at the Hall of Residence. Despite her initial reluctance, she rallies the group and convinces them to join her on a journey to save their island. However, Tui reacts angrily and throws away what Moana believes to be the heart of Te Fiti. Determined to succeed, Moana searches for the heart with the help of her grandmother's staff. Moana rushed to her grandmother's home, where she found her lying weak on her bed. Despite her condition, Tala insisted that Moana must embark on a mission to find Maui and return the heart of Te Fiti to its rightful place. Tala instructed Moana to introduce herself as a member of Motunui, and invite Maui to join her on the journey. Moana was torn between leaving her grandmother and embarking on a perilous journey, but Tala assured her that she would always be with her. 
With a heavy heart, Moana bid farewell to her grandmother and began to prepare for her voyage. The next morning, Moana was practicing her introduction when she met Maui, a mischievous demigod who had stolen the heart of Te Fiti. As Moana spoke to Maui, she was surprised by a chicken named Heihei, who had followed her to the shore. It's okay. Stay. As night fell, Moana continued to practice her dialogue until she drifted off to sleep. In her sleep, the boat drifted off course and when she woke up, she found herself lost at sea. Moana desperately tried to turn the ship around, but her efforts were in vain, and the boat capsized in the rough waters. Moana was swept away to a foreign island by a storm. But fortunately, Te Fiti's stone remained intact. Angry and frustrated that the ocean did not help her, Moana headed back to sea. However, it was revealed that the ocean deliberately brought the storm to bring her to Maui. Moana hid behind her boat and Maui was surprised to see her. Moana introduced herself to Maui and tried to persuade him to return the heart of Te Fiti. However, Maui continued to pride himself as a hero and even sign Moana's paddle, making her angry and remember her grandmother's message. Unfortunately, Maui misunderstood Moana's intention and thought that she came to thank him. Maui then locked Moana in a rock cave, taking her boat and chicken to find his magic hook. Now let's fatten you up, drumstick. When Moana searched for a way out of the cave, she discovered a small hole in a stone wall and managed to slip through it. She then jumped onto Maui's boat, but unfortunately missed and was left stranded as Maui sailed away. Despite being abandoned, Moana refused to give up, and with the help of the ocean, she found her way back to the boat. Maui was still skeptical that Moana was the chosen one and continued to dismiss her. Moana learned that Maui was afraid of the stone because it was the reason he lost his magic hook. He also warned her of the dangers the stone could attract, including the notorious Kakamura pirates, a group of coconut shell-clad humans. To Moana's surprise, they soon encountered the Kakamura pirates, who were determined to steal the stone. In a chaotic scuffle, the stone ended up being swallowed by Moana's chicken, Heihei. The pirates quickly seized Heihei and took him to their main boat. Despite Maui's desire to flee, Moana insisted on rescuing her beloved chicken and fought the pirates alongside Maui. After successfully taking Heihei from the Kakamura, Moana and Maui finally managed to escape from the pirates. Maui was surprised by Moana's bravery and resourcefulness in the face of danger. However, Maui still refused to accompany Moana to Te Fiti, warning her of the dangerous and treacherous journey that lay ahead. Maui explained to Moana that they would need to cross a treacherous sea inhabited by dangerous lava monsters called Teka, and that he couldn't do much without his magic hook. Despite Maui's reluctance, Moana was determined to restore Maui's good name, which had been tarnished by his past actions as the heart thief of Te Fiti. Moana convinced Maui that returning the stone to Te Fiti would make him a hero and restore his good reputation. Maui finally agrees to help Moana after imagining himself being adored by everyone as a hero. However, before they could embark on their journey to Te Fiti, Maui insisted on finding his hook, which he believed was the key to defeating Te Ka. After agreeing to continue their journey, Moana and Maui set sail to the Tamatoa Nest. Maui skillfully maneuvered the boat, impressing Moana with his sailing abilities. She asked Maui to teach her, but he only half-heartedly instructed her, underestimating her abilities. One morning, Moana woke up to a shocking sight. Her home island of Motunui was slowly engulfed in darkness, along with her parents. She realized it was just a dream, but the sense of urgency grew stronger within her. Soon, they arrived at Toa Park Island, where they had to climb Vertical Rock Mountain, the entrance to Lalotai, the home of the monsters. Maui, realizing the dangers ahead, decided to go in alone and leave Moana on the boat. However, Moana refused to stay behind and was determined to catch up with Maui by climbing the mountain herself. Maui was curious about why the people of Motunui had sent Moana on this mission. Moana clarified that it was the ocean itself that had chosen her for a reason. Moana persevered and reached the top of Mount Tamatoa, but they couldn't find the entrance to the cave. Maui stomped his foot in frustration, and to their surprise, it opened the gate to the cave. Okay, let's get my hook. Moana explored then the cave. She stumbled upon a pile of treasures, and atop it was the magical hook Maui was searching for. 
However, Maui forbade her from interfering and taking it. Moana, determined to help, came up with a plan. She disguised herself with conch shells and awakened Tomatoa, a giant crab who was drawn to glittering objects. However, her disguise was soon revealed, and Tomatoa discovered that she was human. Thinking quickly, Moana invited Tomatoa to chat while Maui attempted to grab the hook. But despite their efforts, the hook didn't work as expected, and Maui's transformation wasn't what they had hoped for. Tomatoa seized the opportunity and attacked Maui, overpowering him. When Tomatoa was about to swallow Maui, Moana intervened, revealing Te Fiti's heart. The shiny stone caught Tomatoa's attention, and Moana pretended to offer it as a trade for Maui's life. However, she had prepared a fake heart to deceive Tomatoa. While the crab monster chased after them, Maui and Moana managed to escape just in time, thanks to Moana's quick thinking and resourcefulness. In the evening, they continued their journey together. Moana tried to convince Maui to change his skin back to its original form, but he remained hesitant. Giant hawk. Hey, we're dead soon. All right. Moana then asked about the tattoo on Maui's body, and he explained that it represented a god who had saved him when he was banished by his parents. This god had given him the magical hook to help humanity, including stealing Te Fiti's heart. However, Maui had stolen the heart in the hope of gaining admiration and love from humans, but he had learned that it was never enough. Despite Maui's doubts, he and Moana finally arrived at the island of Te Fiti. Moana handed over the heart stone to Maui, and he prepared to fly closer to Te Fiti to restore it. However, just as he approached, Teika, the fiery monster, attacked him with a fireball. Maui managed to dodge the flame, but he was still hit by a powerful blow that sent him tumbling into the ocean. We won't make it! Yes, we will! Consequently, Maui's cracked magic hook left him feeling defeated and without confidence. Despite Moana's attempts to come up with a new plan to defeat Teika, Maui refused to continue without his hook. He decided to leave Moana with Te Fiti's heart, which left her feeling sad and disillusioned, thinking that the sea had chosen her wrongly. Moana was on the brink of giving up when a glowing stingray, which turned out to be a messenger from her grandmother, appeared from a distance. The stingray offered to accompany Moana home if she wanted to stop, but Moana hesitated. However, she was suddenly filled with the light of her ancestors and felt the support of her grandmother. This gave her renewed determination, and she decided to press on and complete her mission. Finally, Moana returned to the island alone, determined to find a way to pass through Te Ka and reach Te Fiti. Using her newfound skills and expertise in maneuvering the boat, she was able to outwit Te Ka and avoid its attacks for a while. However, Teika eventually struck Moana's ship, causing it to capsize and leaving her vulnerable to Teika's impending attack. Just as Teika was about to pounce on Moana, Maui appeared and slashed at Teika with his hand, providing a distraction and buying Moana enough time to regroup. Together, Maui and Moana fought against Teika, using their combined skills and determination to hold their ground and push forward toward Te Fiti. Moana eventually reached the top of the mountain, where she searched for the existence of Te Fiti Island. Despite her best efforts, she was unable to locate it until she noticed a spiral on Te Ka's chest. Moana came up with a plan and lured Te Ka with a glowing stone, causing Te Ka to momentarily stop attacking her. Moana then called upon the ocean to open a way for her to proceed. Moana then placed the stone into Te Ka's chest, and as Te Ka transformed back into Te Fiti, the once-dead island was instantly restored to its lush and vibrant state. The ocean guided Maui in front of Te Fiti, and Maui sincerely apologized for stealing Te Fiti's heart, realizing the grave mistake he had made. Te Fiti forgave him and bestowed upon him a new magic hook as a symbol of their reconciliation. Thank you. Moana was also rewarded for her bravery and determination. She was given a new boat by Te Fiti, a vessel that was worthy of her skills and destined for great adventures. With the heart of Te Fiti restored, the island transformed back to its original form, and peace was restored. Maui decided to return to his own island to continue his duties as a demigod, while Moana sailed back to her village, greeted warmly by her parents and fellow villagers who were overjoyed to see her safe return. Her bravery and accomplishments were celebrated, and she was hailed as a hero among her people. In the end, Moana and the people of Motunui pulled out their boats, inspired by their ancestors' legacy, and set sail to explore the vast ocean, continuing the seafaring traditions of their people. The moral of the story is to never mess with an ocean protecting grandma with a stingray messenger. Always check the weather forecast before sailing to avoid unexpected fireball attacks from angry lava monsters.